In Sweden you only pay 5 euro per month for 10 gigabit upload and download 0 millisecond ping. You are getting scammed in the UK. It's the year 2020 boys check out the sick internet we got here It's freaking wicked mate Look at this we got less than 1 megabit on the upload speed Wow Today's video is very proudly sponsored by probably one of the coolest things I've seen in a while Opera GX, the first web browser specifically designed for gamers like yourself and it really is a one-of-a-kind web browser. One feature that I really like and I'm sure you're going to love too is that it has perfect integration with Razer Chroma devices, the accent color that you select will match your Razer peripherals and even your Nanoleaf lights. The browser comes with a free built-in VPN, a built-in ad blocker, it has Twitch, Instagram and even Discord integration. You can even pop out videos that you're watching on YouTube and continue watching them in another tab so you could be watching one and then you could like pop it out you're on the tech block website but you're still watching the tech block video all of that is possible with the Doppler GX browser you can even limit network RAM and CPU usage straight from the GX control bar so that your gameplay isn't affected whilst you're watching your favorite content creators you can download Opera GX for free by heading over to the first link in the video description and if you're watching this video on mobile just enter your email address and Opera will email you a download link for when you next happen to be on your computer or laptop. Support the companies that support tech blocks so that I can continue making videos just like these. Thanks for listening and thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring today's video. Download the browser, first link down below in the description. Thank you. Before today's video begins, I'd like to announce that we're doing a giveaway. This is a UK only giveaway though, so I'm sorry to everyone who's watching this who isn't in the UK. But if you are in the UK and you'd like to participate in winning a Netgear Rax 80 Wi-Fi router, a very similar Wi-Fi router to what I have in my own setup right here, you can enter the giveaway. There'll be a link down below in the video description. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the video. Here we go. Let's start the speed test. This is using the Netgear M2 Nighthawk 4G LTE router. The ping, we got 37. And let's check out the download speed. Oh, we're pulling 200. If you're wondering what ISP I'm even with, I'm with EE. But bear in mind, this is not fiber optic broadband. This is not VDSL. This is not Virgin Media or anything. This is over 4G LTE. And I'm also on Wi Fi. This is not over a wired Ethernet connection. Let me give you a quick rundown of how this networking setup actually works. Over here we have our 4G LTE modem. This is the Netgear Nighthawk M2. Basically the way all of this works is that gives internet to this and this just provides Wi-Fi to every other device in the apartment. If we hop back on the PC real quick, this is the fastest result I've been able to get using that Nighthawk M2 router. We've got 29 ping, 378 download and just shy of 90 on the upload speed. And this is just over 4G LTE. Absolutely insane speeds. However, I've only been able to replicate this result in the morning. Bear in mind, I ran this test at 8.28 a.m. two days ago, and this is the kind of result we got. Now, these kind of speeds for your broadband probably aren't as impressive to people who have like gigabit up-down connections with their one millisecond ping, and you know, everything's just wonderful for them. I and a lot of other people still don't have access to fiber optic broadband. In fact, the building I live in only has ADSL. And I could technically run a speed test to show you how potato the ADSL connection really is. But to put it simply, we get about 15 megabit download and less than one megabit per second on the upload. The only good thing about our ADSL connection is that the ping is good. Uh, apart from that, if anyone does anything on the network, GG to your ping and GG to the whole network. Okay, this lag. Check yourself. Oh, oh, I don't. I don't think I need a PC. No, 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 no. I'm selling. It's just the potato, okay? No one wants to be using ADSL, especially in 2020. But this is a very good alternative to having ADSL broadband, you know? So it's either we stick with potato ADSL broadband in this apartment, or I'm like, okay, let's try to experiment with 4G, LTE, maybe we can get better speeds. And damn right, you can get better speeds. This is crazy fast, bearing in mind we're on 4G. I've made videos on this channel about the Nighthawk M1, 4G router as well. And people ask me, 
on those videos, how did I even get a 4G unlimited SIM card in the first place? All I did is I was already an EE customer for around eight months. I went into the EE store. I happened to be buying a new phone. Once I bought the phone, they saw that I'm already an EE customer because I had EE's 4G home broadband LTE router, which EE gave me when I bought their 4G home broadband. This was no fancy router. This wasn't the Netgear ones that are super high speed. It was capped at 150 download. And I think the upload speed was probably capped at 70, 75. I've made videos about that 4G router that EE gave me. I can put up a card on screen that you can press and go watch that. But it got the job done. It was way faster than ADSL. Problem was it had a data cap. I didn't want a data cap because it was very costly. Now I'm guessing when I was buying this new phone from EE, they saw that in my account, I'd been paying like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pounds in like extra fees for internet. And luckily the guy hooked me up with an unlimited SIM card for I think it was like 25 or 30 pound a month. I don't know what the contract was. I think it was like 12 months or 18 months, but I couldn't say no. And they ended up giving me a whole new SIM card, fully unlimited, same, you know, 4G LTE speeds, everything just now it's unlimited for a very good deal. And that's how I got my unlimited SIM card. My advice would be maybe skip the whole ordering online process. Just go into the EE store. If you're already an EE customer, I'm sure their staff are going to be probably like more eager to give you like an unlimited SIM card if you're already a customer. But yeah, that's how I got mine. Hopefully this advice helps everyone else as well. Turns out on the EE website, you don't have to settle for 50 gigabytes a month that they're offering here with the Nighthawk M2. I think this is like a crime against humanity, surely. 50 gig a month cap on data. This is horrible. Luckily, if you are live in an area in the UK that has 5G broadband, I don't know if this is backwards compatible with 4G. 5G EE Home is powered by a chip that switches between 4G and 5G depending on signal strength. Okay, cool. So this 5G antenna or whatever is also backwards compatible with 4G. And check this out. This deal comes with 1000 gigabytes a month. Much better. 1000 gigabyte a month cap. This, I don't know if I'd even complain about. 1000 gigs, even with a couple people watching Netflix and watching YouTube every day, 1000 gigs a month might be okay for most people actually. But this is the best service that EE offer and it's also completely out of stock so you can't even order it if, if, even if you want one. As today's video is mainly about these two devices right here, the M2 and the M1. How do they compare because they do cost different amounts. Should you spend the extra money on the M2 or should you save 100 or so pound and just pick up the M1 instead? Well, I've done testing on both of these devices for a long enough time to like know how they behave and everything as I've obviously been using these to upload videos to do everything on the internet I've been using these devices here. How do they compare? All right, let's begin by talking about the Nighthawk M1. So this one here, this has very high upload speed. Higher upload speed in fact than the Nighthawk M2 which is probably a bit surprising to most of you because the Nighthawk M1 is a cheaper device yet it's able to achieve way higher upload speeds for whatever reason. I'm not sure why this is the case, but this was able to hit 100 or even 110 megabits per second on the upload speed and this would be very consistent. So uploading YouTube videos, it was an absolute joy using this device. In terms of download speed, however, well, this isn't as fast as the M2. In fact, the M2 was way faster than the M1 in terms of download speed, but then lacked a lot in terms of upload speed. The M1, I think capped out at around 270 was like the peak download speed I think I ever got on it, but it would seem to struggle to maintain those high download speeds. And often what would happen is either the speed halves and just goes to like 150, and you have to restart the router in order for the speeds to go back up to what they're supposed to be at. But I'm not sure if it was the fault of the M1 not being able to hit those speeds. In fact, I think it's probably much more likely that EE, my 4G LTE SIM card that's in here, that's my ISP, you know, they were throttling my my download speeds and just the speeds in general would often get throttled and after i would restart the router they would just magically go back up to you know what they're meant to be at but yeah that's kind of my experience with the m1 the m2 on the other hand holy crap this thing is insane man the download speeds that this can hit 
is very impressive. Nearly 400 megabits per second on the download speed, which is crazy, man. Also, the M2 is a touchscreen device. There's tons of settings in here. You can turn on the Wi-Fi. It shows you the Wi-Fi name, Wi-Fi password. You can change the Wi-Fi password, do all that. It shows you how many gigabytes have been used this month. It's a very advanced piece of tech and oh my lord, the download speed, yeah. That's where this thing shines, at least in my scenario using EE. I'm in the UK, I'm sure if you buy this device and you live in America or something, you know, you're gonna get different results. But the strong point of this is absolutely the download speed. Very, very high speeds and it's able to maintain those high speeds. It does kind of like drop off to about 300 megabits per second, which once again, not sure if it's the fault of this device or it's the fault of my ISP. But nevertheless, it seems to maintain between 200 and 300 megabits per second on the download, often actually going above 300 and stabilizing at maybe 320, 350, something like that. Very impressive in terms of download speed. The upload speed, this is where this device really confused me and once again, not sure if it's the fault of the device or the fault of my ISP. But the upload speed was capped at about 45 megabits per second and it would not go up. For I think around two to three weeks of testing this thing initially, we were stuck at 45 megabits per second on the upload. I don't know what changed, but now we're able to hit a bit higher. In terms of connectivity options and battery life, both of these devices have USB Type-C ports, that's how you charge them. They both have a 5,040 milliamp hour battery, so they'll last you a decent amount of time if you're out on the go, as these are after all mobile hotspots. Both of these devices have a USB Type-A port that charges other devices, and they both have gigabit ethernet ports as well. So you can plug them in straight via ethernet, either into your PC, or you can plug it into your router, and then your main home router can give Wi-Fi to everything else. That's how I've got mine set up. As these are portable mobile hotspots, they do of course have a Wi-Fi signal that they emit, both the 2.4 gigahertz band as well as the 5 gigahertz band. They have Wi-Fi and you can turn the Wi-Fi off if you don't want to use the Wi-Fi and, you know, preserve your battery life. They have a lot of settings, so you can play around with all sorts of like range settings for the Wi-Fi. However, neither of these devices have long Wi-Fi range, so what you should do is probably run a similar setup to what I'm doing, run an ethernet cable from this into a more powerful Wi-Fi router and then rely on that more powerful Wi-Fi router to emit Wi-Fi to the rest of your devices in your home. And finally, one more cool feature is that you can plug in a USB Type-C cable into either of these devices and plug that cable straight into your PC. Now this can either be a Type-C to Type-C or Type-A to Type-C and you get an internet connection over your Type-C cable, which is awesome. So you can just use a USB cable as an ethernet cable basically and tether this device to your PC so it can charge your device and at the same time give you an internet connection over the same USB cable. So genuinely very impressed with both of these. Both the M1 and the M2 also have TS9 ports so you can plug in an external antenna into either one of them and have potentially higher speeds I try to plug in an antenna into the Nighthawk M1 and all that did is slow my speeds down. So instead I just stuck to the internal antennas that are inside here and they seem to do a pretty damn good job. However, your situation might be different, so plugging in an external antenna for you might actually help boost speeds. However, from my experience, it actually slowed the speeds down. In conclusion, which one should you go for? Well, if upload speed is your number one priority, go with the M1. And if download speed is your number one priority, go with the M2. This is based off of my own testing. If you buy these routers, I can't guarantee, and nor can anyone really guarantee, that you're going to hit hundreds of megabits per second on the download and upload speed and all this. This is based off of so many factors, you know, where you live, your ISP. If you live in a rural area, probably don't expect to hit very high speeds, but these might speed up your existing 4G connection, so they might be worth considering if you live in a rural area. With all that said, I'm gonna have links down below in the video description to where you can buy the M2 or the M1 over on Amazon. Thank you very much for watching, hopefully it's been a helpful video, and I hope to see you in another one soon. Goodbye.